Hello, Max Wright here from Success Council, and I find myself in Bali at the moment. I came here to check out uh, Indonesia's answer to Bitcoin Island, and uh, I'll actually do a separate video on that in the following days, completely separate. This is actually a little bit different video to what uh, the normal Bitcoin evangelizing that I do. Um, this one is actually a question specifically for uh, all the Bitcoin Brains Trust, if you will. All the geniuses that hang out on Bitcoin Reddit forum and the Bitcoin Talk forums. I have uh, a question for you if uh, you would be so kind. Thank you in advance. Uh, and this question came about because um, at a panel at, in, uh, at Cryptolina, a little regional Bitcoin event in North Carolina a little while back, um, there were six of the Bitcoin community's best and brightest. And they were asked a question, what's the number one thing holding Bitcoin back at the moment? And to give you an idea, uh, what the, the, who was on the panel, um, it was uh, Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, uh, Dan Larimer from BitShares, uh, Sean Wilkinson from Storage. So really smart guys, right? And all six people on the panel answered unanimously. They said the number one thing holding back Bitcoin is the consensus algorithm, the proof of work algorithm that is the security for the Bitcoin network. And before I get to my question, I'll just uh, explain a little bit um, why, that, why they probably said that for, the, for everybody else who's listening. And what's important to understand is that every, as, well, as we all know, every 10 minutes, 25 new Bitcoin come into existence. And at today's price of $500 uh, per Bitcoin, that's $12,500 every 10 minutes. It's $1.8 million per day. And it's, check this out, $650 million per year is created. That's two thirds of a billion dollars will be created in, in uh, 2014 and paid to the miners to secure the network. It's a mind blowing figure. So the question arises, who pays for this $650 million worth? And the answer is that you and I pay for it. The people who actually hold Bitcoin in their wallets, they pay for it through inflation. So when those new Bitcoins are created, Bitcoin holders pay for that either with a drop in price, and that might happen because say the miners have to liquidate the, their rewards to pay for the electricity costs or to buy new ASIC machines, or we pay for it through the price not rising as fast as it would have because all well, the miners who got, who got to keep Bitcoin as profit, they didn't have to go to the exchanges, put in their money and bid the price up to get those Bitcoins. They got them as rewards. So inflation is a very abstract concept. So let me just slow that down a touch and let's uh, really kind of have a grasp on that. In 2014, at an average price of $500 per Bitcoin, $650 million will be created. What that means is if less than $650 million worth of new money comes in, to uh, chasing Bitcoin, to chase those newly created Bitcoins, then the price will drop. If more than $650 million comes into the Bitcoin ecosystem in 2014, then the price will rise. So let's take a, a hypothetical here. Let's say the Bitcoin price went up one full order of magnitude. It's now $5,000 per Bitcoin. Well, let's say that happens in 2015. Well, that means $6.5 billion of new money chasing the existing Bitcoins would have to come into the Bitcoin ecosystem in 2015, or the price would go down. At more than 6.5 billion, the price will go up. So you can see that the new interest, as people discover the amazingness of Bitcoin and want to buy it, obviously that's upward buying pressure. There's money chasing Bitcoin, it puts upward buying pressure. But the, on the same time, those 25 BTCs created every 10 minutes, the value of those go up by the same, to the same degree that the price goes up. And that's like the reins pulling back the price from going up. And the more the price goes up, the stronger those reins become. And so that's the balancing act that effectively is the price of Bitcoin. So you can see that if the consensus algorithm could be tweaked or if a new consensus algorithm could be created and implemented by Bitcoin that reduced the costs of and the rewards to those miners, you could see that the Bitcoin price would probably be over $100,000 already today. That's the kind of improvements that could be made. So let's take a look at the other side and let's see what kind of security Bitcoin is getting for its $650 million spent uh, in 2014. And it's important to know that to run the Bitcoin network is actually very, very inexpensive. Uh, you know, in the order of a few hundred thousands of dollars would probably do it to set up a couple of big servers and manage the network. What Bitcoin is trying to purchase with its $650 million is actually decentralization, right? Because the more miners there are out there, the less any one miner is important. And so the system is more robust. So the system is only as secure as it is decentralized. And that's what Bitcoin is trying to purchase with its $650 million. So let's take a look at what it's getting, what the value for money it's getting for $650 million in terms of decentralization. And let's look at the trend first. And sadly, the trend is towards centralization as Bitcoin scales. 
So what used to, um, you know, we, we've gone, we've come from, you know, the CPUs and the, gra- and the GPUs, and now we're into the ASIC machines, and they, you know, uh, in the last year, they've come in nice little pretty black cases, and you could order one or two or three, put it in your home, and we're seeing that that's kind of becoming not competitive anymore either. And what we're seeing is these big bare bones uh, mining farms being created, and you can see footage of that now. And it's been hypothesized that you know what we're going to see in the next year or two is big purpose-built uh, like factories, you know, water-cooled data mining centers, your purpose-built, and that's going to add to centralization even more. So, for 650 million dollars spent in 2014, what we have is um, a situation where. With, by controlling probably four um, chip manufacturers, you could control 90% of production. By controlling two mining pools, you could get more than 50% of the network. And probably in the next year or two, by controlling maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen mining centers, these purpose-built water-cooled mining centers, then you could control more than 50% of the hashing power. And that's not a lot of decentralization for $650 million spent. So you can see why all six panelists unanimously agreed that the number one thing holding back Bitcoin is its consensus algorithm. If it were possible to create a more efficient consensus algorithm that didn't sacrifice security, then that would send the price of Bitcoin soaring. Now remember, the Byzantine general's problem that that genius Satoshi um, solved was thought to be you know, unbeatable. Unbe- this was a problem that could not be solved. For decades we thought that. And Satoshi came along and solved it. To create a more efficient algorithm, to get more, centra- more decentralization than four chip manufacturers, two mining pools, and a couple of do- dozen mining centers with $650 million, that seems like a walk in the park than solving the Byzantine general's problem. So whether we have to wait one year, two years, five years, or 10 years, I don't know how long it's going to take, I can say with absolute certainty that a more efficient mining algorithm will definitely be created. And so my first question is, is what will that look like? How will the Bitcoin ecosystem handle it? So the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is that it's software and it can be updated. And so I'm really curious to know how Bitcoin is going to be updated to adopt some new, more efficient uh, technology or consensus algorithm because here's the thing bitcoin is the 400 pound gorilla right it has mind-blowing network effects hundreds of millions of dollars of vc money pouring in and you know billions of dollars of value that we all want to protect so at some point when we see something like much better no doubt the bitcoin community will update the software and if it's a hard fork or whatever it has to be um, we'll go ahead and adapt that but what will that look like how will the community find consensus on that and I think it's pretty much impossible that uh, the community will you know, find consensus on, some, on a theory, you know, a theory of a good, you know, a more efficient algorithm. And so that's why I see the altcoin space as being really significant here. For me, it's like a little laboratory with lots of little experiments that are running. They can't hurt Bitcoin no matter how many of them fail, but it's going to be good to see maybe one or two or three or some of them at some point are going to succeed with a new and more efficient algorithm. And when that comes, and after probably years, after an altcoin has proven itself for years, as being just as secure, just as decentralized, but more efficient in terms of its um, consensus algorithm, then maybe with the consensus of the Bitcoin community, can they do an update and something like that? And so we're probably years away from that. So my first question to the Bitcoin community is, is that the way you see it uh, panning out when a new efficient uh, algorithm comes about? And the second question I have is, and I have to preface this with, I'm not a tech- technical guy at all. My background is in marketing and economics, and so that's why I need, uh, I need help with this one. Although it's early days, I don't think we're going to have to wait five or ten years to see this new efficient consensus algorithm created. In fact, I think it's already been created. With my background in economics, I can see that the incentives are all aligned in all the right places, and I can see that the efficiencies are amazing. For example, like if, this, if this was the backbone, if this algorithm was the backbone of the current Bitcoin network, I can see several times more decentralization for less than 5% of the cost and the price of Bitcoin would soar. It would also allow for confirmed transactions in 10 seconds as opposed to 10 minutes in the Bitcoin network. But all these features and efficiencies count for diddly squat if the network is not secure. So if anyone would be kind enough to kind of try and break the algorithm or show me why it won't work. Um, you'd be saving me an enormous amount of time, energy, and money because I'm gonna. I think it's amazing, and I think I'm gonna start putting a lot of time behind it unless I find out that it's a really dumb idea. Because one of you guys uh, show me that it's flawed in some way. So um, it's a it's a token gesture, but as a thank you, I'd, I'd give up to, uh, two bitcoins uh, or a thousand dollars to uh, anybody who shows me that um, that this system is broken. And uh, I should warn you that people have tried before, and um, in the links below, uh, you can see a history of some of those conversations. 
and uh, I think you'll find it really, really interesting. But um, I guess it's time I should tell you what the algorithm is, yeah? It's, uh, it's a delegated proof of stake. And it's the backbone behind the fourth biggest altcoin at the moment, which, which is BitShares X. And uh, BitShares X launched uh, about seven weeks ago or something, I think. Uh, without much marketing and without much fanfare, it's um, rocketed up to, I think, the fourth biggest altcoin. So how does delegated proof of stake work? Well, I'll put some links below to, uh, so you can do some further reading, but just quickly, the highlights are that basically it works on a reputation and real-time frictionless voting system to create a limited amount of trusted parties called delegates who can create blocks. And the same mechanism keeps out nefarious actors so that they cannot create blocks. So it's important to note that not a lot of trust is required of these delegates. All they can do is create blocks and, or not create blocks, include transactions or not include transactions. So if they don't create blocks or don't include transactions, all that means is that the next delegate, well, their block will be twice as big uh, or they'll include the transaction that was missed in their block and the confirmation time was 20 seconds instead of 10 seconds. So, you know, they can't change balances, they can't change senders, recipients or anything like that. So not a great deal of trust is required. Now, built into the client is a voting system. And so everybody who owns BitShares, they can vote on uh, a panel of 101 delegates who get to create the blocks. Now, that figure of 101, that's completely arbitrary. Uh, if the system wanted more decentralization, you could just add more delegates, but then the cost of running the system would go up. And if you, want, if you wanted to save money, you could reduce the number of delegates, but your expense would be centralization. And so 101 delegates is just that first implementation of a sweet spot, but BitShares X holders can actually have control of that and change the number of delegates. So the 30,000 foot view is that because the number of delegate positions is limited, all of the delegates are competing against each other and offering to lower their salaries. They're offering to lower their income in order to be delegates to try and attract more votes. So the cost is kept in check by competition amongst the delegates. Meanwhile, the degree of decentralization is firmly held by the BitShares owners because they can decide exactly how many delegates they want to employ. They can make millions of delegates if they want, depends on the level of decentralization they choose. Meanwhile, nefarious actors are automatically kicked out and uh, they can't actually do anything useful um, even by trying to be nefarious. So even tardy delegates uh, are just kicked out. And so I think delegated proof of stake and BitShares X is going to be a really interesting experiment to watch over the next year or so. Uh, if, and this is a big if, but if a security vulnerability is not found, then I think that we'll see the price of BitShares X explode and that will be the, um, the signal for the Bitcoin community to take a serious look at it. And uh, I mean, I hope it's a successful experiment because it would just mean the price of Bitcoin exploding uh, if it were to find a more efficient consensus algorithm. So I'll leave this video here, um, but I'm very genuine about the two Bitcoin reward. So um, please uh, leave your comments and feedback below. I'm going to read all of them and I thank you in advance. I much appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.